Welcome out to our first Ask the Pastors podcast. Of course, today I thought about naming it the Back Row podcast. It's often hard for us to get the back row of the church here, but now with COVID-19 going on, the church is pretty empty. But uh, this is our first podcast. We're naming it, calling it Ask the Pastors, where normally Ben and myself will be here uh, answering your questions that you submit through social media uh, to the church and to us personally throughout the week. And then on Wednesdays, we'll be answering a number of your questions through our podcast. But today, our first one is Ask the Missionary. And uh, glad to have our missionary with us, Brent Moeller uh, from South Africa. Welcome, Brent. Thank you. Nice to be here. How long have you been in South Africa? This May will be our 30th year. Wow. Which is hard to believe. And Just, you have a family heritage there as well. Yes. Right? Uh, 1970, my dad got a job in South Africa and um, we spent two years there. That's kind of what was instrumental in um, my brother going there. And then in 1985, I went, left this church after serving two years and um, went to South Africa for a one-year missionary term and after that I met my wife and shortly after we got married we came to South Africa we got married in 89 and came to South Africa in 1990 Amen. so it was well you mentioned uh, uh, you know getting married you were here in the church uh, for those times and uh, the Lord took you to South Africa. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about that, but then also update us on your family, because some of our folks uh, knew you back in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, update us on your family, and then how the family dynamic has changed now that your kids are getting older as well. Right. Uh, three children, correct? Three children, right. Yeah, so. So, uh, yes, um, most of the people who may still be at, uh, at Temple who uh, would have known me during those years would never have known Sheila. They may have met her, and I'm sorry she couldn't be with me this time around, mm -hmm. but um, she's back in South Carolina where my kids are. My son, Mike, is 26. He's a graphic designer uh, and has really excelled in his career, and we're happy for that. Uh, faithful in his church, which that is even more, makes Amen. us even more happy. Mm -hmm. um, and then my daughter, Carissa, is 23. And she is a social worker, works for a Christian organization helping adopt children and dealing with those issues and um, finding the right parents and things of that nature. Um, then my, my third son, Landry, he has sprouted. Uh, he is certainly not the smallest or the young. He may be the youngest, but he is six foot four. And uh, wow. he is a senior in high school. So every... All of our kids, we have brought them back for their senior year in high school to help them get ready for university, get ready. Uh, even though the culture is not that dramatically different than the states in South Africa, it still has helped sure. them very much. Mm -hmm. And so, but Landry's planning to come back with us and do an internship because he feels with us because he thinks uh, God may be leading him to enter the ministry. Amen. So oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so tell us about uh, when you said you went there uh, after you guys were married. Um, is there any you know life verse or ministry verse that uh, has kind of carried you through those years, mm -hmm. uh, or is there a particular uh, portion of scripture that God used in directing you in that way? Um, after thirty years uh, in ministry, just kind of curious about you know how God uh, worked all that out. I think if there's well, there's a number of verses that God has used over the years, but uh, in relation to our ministry, I think it may be uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Contextually, he's, Paul is talking about um, God's plan to make uh, complete what he has started in our life. Uh, but and that includes my calling and my wife's calling to South Africa. But the Lord said... Uh, uh, faithful is he who called you who will also do it mm -hmm. and that has been a real encouragement because things haven't always gone so well we've our ministry probably best could be described as over these 30 years as uh, three steps forward two steps back mm -hmm. and um, when we came over to the states or shortly before we came to the states we were in that one of those three steps forward modes and 
it was a great, it's been a great season of ministry, but uh, now, if I can be honest, because of all the things that have happened, um, we're back in the two steps back. Sure. But the same God who um, sent us and called us is faithful to promise to do what he has sent us there to do. And that's what's held us there. Our focus isn't on the three steps forward or the two steps back, but on a faithful God. Amen. Good. Well, and then in light of that, in 30 years, which is just amazing, uh, do you see a difference in the spiritual battles that you guys and the ministries are facing today versus 30 years ago? Yeah, very much so. It was a very different world in South Africa when we first went because it was still during apartheid. Mm. And so when we as white young white people went into the black areas, we were almost treated like a uh, special VIP, almost. Uh, they were kind of in awe that they would, we would even be in their area. Because usually if they saw a white person, a white male, they thought police. Um, so nowadays, sometimes the attitude is, hey, white man, what are you doing here? You're in my area now. You know, sure. so the attitude of the people, for, to, it, the, the race relations are still not great, and so, uh, and especially that with, especially with foreigners and Americans, especially. Mm -hmm. um, Any time, um, you know, nowadays they'll say things like, "Why, why are you here? We have our own pastors." And they do, and if they would preach the gospel, I'd be happy to go somewhere else. <laughs> right. You know? Sure. Some of them do, thank God, but mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, that's so, the problem. So with that, um, you know, not just race relations, but just in general in 30 years, uh, how do you feel about your physical safety now versus over the, over the last 30 years? Well, when we first went, uh, as a, as a white person, we were very, very safe because um, you, the police presence was everywhere. And uh, if you were not a white person at nighttime, you had to leave the area where we lived or where, like in the cities and along the beaches and other things. Today, crime is, is a huge problem. Um, it is the scourge of South Africa. South Africa is a incredible, incredible place, incredible beauty, uh, great opportunities. Uh, the people are generally very friendly, very warm, but you, we have a we have an almost a 40% unemployment rate, and when you have that, uh, you have a you have a country that has some very wealthy people and a lot of very poor people and the youth unemployment is probably about 75 percent mm -hmm. so it, it's it just a um, it's just the perfect mix for for a country just full of crime sure uh, well you mentioned that uh, if those would be preaching the gospel uh, that you wouldn't have to be there. And so there's a, there's a lot of things going on. So what are some of the spiritual battles in the ministry today that you're facing? You talked about three steps forward, two steps back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think our folks would uh, love to hear what are some of those uh, spiritual battles that you're facing, mm -hmm. you know, today? Well, there's a famous uh, statement about Christianity in especially Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, that Christianity that's been in Christianity's been in Africa since a lot like 18 well even before that if you go back to the Portuguese who who, who brought Catholicism but uh, from the early uh, 1800s onwards there has been a strong Christian presence um, the problem is um, over the years through many mistakes and the biggest mistake being that the uh, churches have accommodated uh, the message of the gospel with the African culture. 
in mission in missiology you call it syncretism where it's a, a mixing of Christian belief with cultural beliefs and so that waters down uh, the gospel uh, there are things about the African culture that are fine and not against the Bible in any way but there are a number of things that that the, it is against uh, and it creates a problem uh, so so the statement w is that Christianity is very wide but about an inch thick uh, Africans tend to be very emotional and so uh, and that's a wonderful thing I love it I love it about them they they uh, their worship is lively their worship is real uh, heartfelt uh, it, and you see it but uh, it also tends to lend itself to charismatic beliefs mm -hmm. and the charismatic movement is by far the big boys on our block um, there are mega churches all over the country uh, that are charismatic health and wealth gospel is predominant in those churches and um, interesting thing to do I encourage the people to do this to go to the internet and look up the 20 wealthiest preachers in the world you'll find about 12 of them are Africans mm -hmm. and very very rich it doesn't you know it doesn't make sense the poorest continent has the richest preachers mm -hmm. you know go figure so um, that that is those are the two are you one of the 12 uh, well uh, I think I'm 13 <laughs> um, you haven't quite broke the the, the uh, top 20 you know mm -hmm. uh, but yeah those are those are the two biggest battles the, the the syncretism where you're trying to accommodate and of course most churches follow that where they have uh, ancestor worship is is the predominant belief in African co religious culture and that is that the ancestors those who have passed on uh, control their destiny and so uh, if things good happen in your life if things bad happen it's because of the ancestors so the Christi the, these churches have added that into Christianity and allowed it mm -hmm. uh, which we are totally find op opposing to the to the true gospel so how is that affecting your ministry uh, you know you've started enough how many churches uh, through the years have been started through your guys and, and how is that impacting those churches today right. or those Christians today right well we were blessed to work with um, three churches when we first went there that were already established missionaries started them uh, and uh, they those missionaries are now gone and so we they are now in our orbit of influence mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't regularly minister there but they often will contact us for um, mentorship I guess you might say and then when we moved to Durban in 1995 uh, it began our ministry there we have we have we have two churches that we have established and we have now uh, three mission churches that are being started and um, most of those are now being led by nationals so mm -hmm. that that's the neat neat thing but as far as how it's affected it it's constantly we're constantly dealing with it we're constantly dealing with uh, like new believers that come in and as long as things are going well they're happy with Jesus mm -hmm. but when things get tough they are so tempted to go back to the the old ways mm -hmm. um, and I'm not talking about the old you know sinful uh, patterns I'm talking about their belief systems mm -hmm. and then the charismatic movement is so predominant it it's just been a battle we don't and we don't we don't make it try to make it an issue we don't fight them but we we just preach the, the gospel we just preach the truth and let the chips fall where they may right 
So in all that, of course, <clears throat> we know the big news today is uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus that uh, is now designated as a worldwide pandemic. And you know that's one of the reasons why we get a back row here. You usually gotta get here pretty early to get a back row in the church and we've got it all to ourselves now. <laughs> right. uh, but how is COVID-19 affecting you all uh, over there? Well, even with your travel plans, uh, cause you're planning on going back sometime soon. Right, well, we plan to go back in June and um, so for us, the COVID-19 COVID has, it's impacted us because, well, for instance, uh, we were supposed to be with you folks Sunday and mm -hmm. can't be here. Uh, and, um, and then uh, the next two weeks from now, we were supposed to be in Oklahoma. That meeting has been canceled and we don't know the other meetings in April and May. Are they gonna be canceled? We, we don't know. Um, so that, for us, that's where we stand, but we are planning to go back in June. Right now, if we, if things don't change, we will face a two-week automatic quarantine. Um, they are currently in a 21-day lockdown where people are not supposed to leave their house, uh, and they have the police and they have the army out making sure of that. Now, is that nationwide? Nationwide. Uh, and. The big problem with Africa is that their healthcare system is already stretched beyond normal, just with the issues with tuberculosis and HIV AIDS and other sicknesses. So there's, there's no beds already in the government hospitals. Uh, and then you add this, the other big problem is that the the home, people live, you know, especially the African people, they live in homes, maybe a two bedroom house or two room house where there's 10 or 11 people living in close proximity. There's no way you can practice safe right. social distancing. Sure. Uh, then the third thing is, unlike we here in America who are going eventually to experience uh, some financial assistance from our government. There is no assistance for mm -hmm. those people and they are gonna just be without work. And uh, as is the case with so many people in the world, it's hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. So what we are hoping to do is to, you know, provide a little bit of a security net like the early church did, Amen. you know, uh, to, to our people where, you know, uh, I've asked, some of our leaders to develop a, a committee who can handle that and we will we're going to be sending some money to them to help that because well it's what they did in the early church and right. I see this as that opportunity for us right. to do. Yeah, an important time for Christians to be binding together and helping and serving one another there's no doubt about that. So I know you have some ministry goals uh, going forward. Uh, you know, your, your goal wasn't just to get to 30 years and then coast. Um, <laughs> but also I know with some of the difficulties you talked about, you know, a couple steps back because of some changes with people. But uh, just tell us a little bit going forward and, and all these things are affecting it with COVID-19 and everything. But, you know, what are your goals going forward for the next however many years you're going to be the next right. term or five years, whatever that is? Well, God has us in a, in a place right now where the last couple of years, we have been able to step back from being in the front and letting our leadership take over. And we have been more uh, serving in a, a coaching relationship, mentoring them, helping them from behind. So I'm not, uh, late, uh, over the last couple of years, I have not been nearly as, you know, out front. Mm -hmm. And I like that, and that's what I've worked for. But unfortunately, um, uh, we have, just two weeks before I left, one of our key leaders uh, fell into, uh, I think, a real time of discouragement and uh, he asked to be released from leadership and from the church, which was devastating. We had no clue that that was going to happen and he, is, he was a pivotal part of our plans because we were starting a new church in his area where he lived. We bought land and um, things just did not go as we had expected. There were some overwhelming challenges to the gospel that frankly in 30 years I have never seen uh, in South Africa. I mean, it was just uh, like, you know, preaching to 
uh, rocks. Mm -hmm. And um, um, there were a number of kids that, he's a teacher out there, and he led a number of the, the students to Christ, and we were expecting at least to start the church with these young people, but their parents won't let them come because many of them are a member of a very large South African, African Christian cult. Um, and so losing him is huge. His name is uh, Paul. You, you'll meet him in the presentation, he and his wife, on Sunday. Sunday. And um, really, I ask you to pray for that family that God might turn their heart back home. I mean, they're, my, they're our children. My wife and I both look at them as, um, you know, some of the dearest children we ever have had in our ministry, spiritual children, and uh, been very hard to mm -hmm. cope with that. But uh, it's not the first time we've, it, it, in fact, it's happened in 30 years, it's happened five times where we have trained men uh, who showed great promise and showed faithfulness who've left us. And so it's not like uh, it was a shock, but this one of probably more than any was a shock. We saw it, just didn't see it coming. So that 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 is going to force us to have to um, probably be in the front again, especially in a couple of the ministries. What was nice about the last couple of years is that I, I was almost like a, uh, roving, going from church to church, and I, you know, be able to preach in those places. I'm not sure that's going to happen. And then we have one of our other churches, where very, very good man, man, I would I trust with my life that I've known ever since I went and worked with my brother, and I've known him that long. He was a teenager back in those days, and. Uh, um, been he's worked with us probably for 27 years uh, but he and his wife are experiencing severe marital problems and uh, he's now the pastor of that church so the church is gonna have to make the decision on what to do but I'm gonna encourage him when I get back to take a sabbatical and get his get his marriage back where it ought to be sure uh, and I think he will agree with that um, but it's going to be hard because it just means, you know, ground that we've already claimed has been taken back and we're going to have to fight for it again. All right. Well, the blessing is that you are still there and able to maybe that's uh, as we as you described your family dynamic that uh, God's making it possible even more for you to be that person to help restabilize some of those folks that are struggling with some of those uh, spiritual things uh, drawing them away. I'm excited too that with with Landry coming back, he, he's uh, he really has a, a gift I I see with young people. The kids love him as he's especially this last year really gotten involved with, in their lives. And so that is a big burden on my heart. Uh, Africa is so young. Uh, it's the youngest continent on earth. I think the average age of African is, uh, of Africa is about 14 years old. Okay. You know, so, mm. and uh, good. that'll be great. Amen. So it'll help me to concentrate on some of this other stuff. Any recent books you've, rec you've read that you'd uh, recommend to the folks? Yeah, I, I, I do. I've, I've been blessed uh, to have uh, been op have had the opportunity to read a number of excellent books. The first one I would highly recommend is a book by Eric Metaxas on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Mm -hmm. It's a great book. Wow, what a challenge. Uh, I read a I read a book about uh, not a not a Christian book but about a to real misunderstood Christian man a man who uh, to be honest probably the 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 uh, technology we have today in this fight with COVID is directly responsible to him his name was John Rockefeller uh, the book mm -hmm. is called Titan mm -hmm. by Ron Cherno it was a real real good real good book. Uh, spiritually, a uh, great book called Spurgeon's Sorrows, mm -hmm. which deals with his battle with depression. Mm -hmm. And this this man who wrote the book, uh, he, um, he quotes from Spurgeon and all the battles he had was 
with depression and how God, you know, ministered to him during those times. Really a good book. And then the last one I would say is um, a book by Elizabeth Elliot called um, uh, Suffering is Not for Nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's those, those are books that I've really been good, blessed to read. Well, we'll make those uh, available to folks in written form as well. Uh, tell us about how you, your wife you know, how's she dealing with everything and what's going on with her right now? And, and I know a number of our ladies are going to be interested in that. And, and how can they be praying for your wife yeah. in these days? Well, um, m my two older kids are really battling with illness. My son, as you guys probably remember, since he was a little boy, has had ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. So it's something now that he's 26 and he's... He, He's really learned to cope with it quite well. A lot of times when he's having the battle, he doesn't even tell us, but he's in it right now. And there's, you know, issues. The problem is too, that some of the, some of the uh, side effects of the disease sound very similar, similar to COVID. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he's like fevers and other things of that nature. Uh, uh, chills and things um, and, and so that is a concern you, you know we live 8,000 miles away from our kids and to have two of them living over here it's really not been easy for her sure I haven't liked it either but it's especially hard for her then my daughter Carissa is battling uh, an illness she's had for a couple of years uh, and uh, we were glad to be able to come back uh, we we've gone with her to the Mayo Clinic and still seeking answers. We don't have any definitive answers. Uh, the doctors at Mayo said, we understand what you're doing or what's happening in your body, but we don't have any answers for you. Mm -hmm. um, so they encouraged her, you've got to just learn to cope, which isn't great to hear when you're 23 years old. Right. Yeah. You know, so, um, so that's been a battle for Sheila. But she's, uh, she's, she's been very, uh, she's been my rock in the ministry and especially going through um, this last big, um, you, know, s you know, punch in the gut with this guy leaving. Right. She really encouraged me, helped me. Uh, what's been interesting in our ministry and in our life and probably many of you would be able to testify to this as, as husband and wife, that um, oftentimes when I'm down, she's up, and when she's down, I'm up, mm -hmm. uh, and we help each other. And uh, so, yeah, so I thank God for her. Uh, I need to thank God more than what I do, but she is a great. So as a lot of our ladies understand the motherly instinct, and no matter how old your children get, uh, still going to be concerned and Absolutely. pray for her as she, as you guys head back to South Africa uh, with uh, two older children staying here that are uh, you know, dealing with these physical uh, ailments. And then, um, you know, a number of years ago, we brought the Gang of Eight over yeah. and uh, we were able to go to Matawani and uh, minister there. We were in the, in the, uh, the orphanage that you all uh, had going and uh, a number of uh, things. But uh, tell us about some things we can be praying about for you um, and uh, that we can uh, be praying maybe some needs you have uh, just generally things that we can be praying for you guys in the ministry uh, going forward well one of our one of our churches uh, well uh, mission churches um, but it's it's had a real good beginning and the, it's got good leadership and uh, and uh, Pray that that continues. Uh, we have land in this area, and the problem is it's about three, three and a half hours away from Durban, a very rural area. It's the second poorest area in Af in southern Af South Africa, and uh, so there's a lot of unemployment. Um, God has blessed us though uh, this 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 furlough. Uh, we got a message from a, uh, an old friend of ours who gave us a large gift to 
Well, for many, for about the last two years, I have just, when I had a little money, I gave toward a construction project that mm -hmm. the leader is involved in. He's a builder. Uh, and you'll see, you'll see pictures again on Sunday of this ministry. But uh, God has given us the money uh, to keep that project going. Um, it would be great to have a team come and help like uh, uh, you guys did in Montiwani. I don't know if that would be you guys or some other church, but it would be super if, if that would happen. I will say for those of you who went uh, to Montiwani, this would be even more challenging. Sounds exciting. <laughs> uh, and then um, because of the issues that I talked about before um, and the, the plans for Landry to work with the youth, this is going to be one of the areas of focus is trying to... Um, one of the things we found in our ministry is that we'll, we'll lead young people to Christ, even kids, and my wife does a, a wonderful job with the children, but when they get about 14, they you, you see them leaving the church, and uh, about 16, 17, they come back with a baby, or they come back with the scars of some very bad decisions. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that uh, we will find uh, a, a, a way to help gap that and I'm hoping my son will be a part of that plan with God so um, anytime a church would have interest in coming and working with the young people like a youth camp or things like that it would be outstanding uh, we would love that um, leadership training is just uh, there's just so many areas that um, in the area of marriage and, and uh, family life. Mm -hmm. Just uh, many things that churches here could consider coming and being a part of. And I know off camera you had uh, put together a list of a number of things and we'll be actually uh, putting that on the video here for our folks mm -hmm. and uh, that will also be included in a link where they can uh, download and print that out. Any final words for our folks here? Uh, and I know, uh, well yeah, go ahead, any final words? Well, I would just say to you, you uh, dear people, we thank you so much for um, your faithfulness for 30 years you've been with us, you've stood with us. We thank God for your faithfulness and um, thank you for sending a team over and, uh, and thank you for your willingness to still have a part in what God is doing. Keep praying. Pray for our leaders, um, especially at this time. And especially I ask you, pray for Paul and Makaraba, who's the young man who has just left us that God will turn his heart back home. Amen. Well, Brandon mentioned earlier that he's unable to be with us Sunday, but uh, with modern technology, he's actually going to be with us on Sunday. Uh, so tune in Sunday. Uh, this is uh, for our Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting. Uh, we encourage you to be praying for one another, be praying for our country, uh, be checking on each other, uh, and just make certain that things are going. Just as he talked, as Brett talked about the importance of us as Christians coming together, this is an important time for us to be banding together, praying for one another, uh, available to help one another. Uh, but tune in Sunday because uh, Brent will actually be sharing his ministry and uh, preaching to us uh, uh, by video uh, on Sunday. And so we encourage you to tune in for that as well and looking forward to it. Thanks for being here, brother. It's Thank good you. to see you. Great to be Amen. here.